Hello, hello, good afternoon, uh, afternoon and welcome. So here we are, it's a Thursday and uh, we are very close from being done with this uh, module. Now for today, we are going to be covering a few things and uh, yeah, I'm glad to have you guys here. It is a pleasure to be uh, still working with you. And uh, well, just let me tell you, this afternoon we're going to be talking about possibilities or what we um, understand as um, conditional classes with if. When we talk about conditions, of course, we are going to be um, mentioning what may happen, um, you know, and uh, what is the result of that. So it's something that will happen just after a condition is met. And that's what we refer to when we're talking about conditionals. So we're going to learn this afternoon how to use them, how to apply conditionals. Um, then we might also get to talk about um, how to use gerunds with, um, with ease to provide um, short responses. For example, um, when, I'm, when we are just commenting on something, just sharing our opinion on something, we do it with gerunds. That is a common and well-known thing. Uh, now, it, it is also important that you know how to reply when someone says something like that. Like, if you agree with that person, you may show agreement. And if you don't, well, you may also show disagreement with their opinion. Um, so those are the two main things we're going to be dealing with. We also have a conversation there in the middle. Um, which we are very possibly going to be practicing. So yeah, it's hopefully going to be an in interesting afternoon. Now, before that, I want to get I want to get you guys thinking tonight. I mean, this afternoon. I want to uh, I want you to think on how will you describe the perfect house for you. So how will you describe the perfect house for you? We all have a house, yes. But many times, and I'm not saying that it happens to everyone, but I think that in many occasions, we have a house that we might feel like it can be better, you know, like it can, it can be improved, it can have something different, it can be probably in a different location. Um, what is something that we will change from our house or what does a house have to have so that we feel completely comfortable in it? So. Tell me, describe the perfect house for you. And uh, I think this afternoon we're going to start by hearing from um, probably Josue. So, Josue, tell me, how would you describe the perfect house for you? Hello, Josue. Hello, teacher. Yes. Mm, sorry, no he entendido muy bien. ¿Cómo describirías tu casa perfecta? Esa es la, la, la pregunta esta tarde. How would you describe your per, the, the perfect house for you? Mm. Mm -hmm. Think about it. What will be the perfect house that uh, you will feel completely comfortable in? Uh, if you were to ask me, for example, I would say that my perfect house will have to be small. I don't like big houses. I don't, I don't know why, but it's just like something that I don't feel like very comfortable in a big house. I would like to have a small house uh, in the middle of a large piece of of, uh, of land. I would like it to have a big backyard and also a big front yard, um, a garden probably on the front yard and uh, uh, my own small plantation, yeah, like vegetables plantation or vegetable garden in the backyard. And I would like it to be near a river if it was possible because I feel like, you know, having a house close to a river also gets you, not a river, but like a, a small river, not a huge river, not something like a Lempa, but something smaller. Um, also, 
I would, of course, enjoy the land if it was plain, because in my, for example, in my case, the place where I live, there are basically no inclinations of land. It's basically all just plain. So yeah, I would love it if it was still, you know, plain, and uh, if it was grassy, like it had uh, um, grass in the garden. So that would be my description for my my perfect house: a small house in the middle of a big piece of land with, um, you know, some some gardening, also some vegetable plantations, and near a river. So that will be my description. Now, what is your Josue? What is uh, your idea of your perfect house? Okay, um, my house uh, big or large, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, garden. Mm -hmm. Um, no sé si está correcto, pero sería on the outside the uh, city. En las afueras de la ciudad. Yes, outside of the city. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So a big house with garden outside of the city. That will be your description of your perfect house. Great. That sounds good. Uh, all right. How about you, Jorge? How would you describe your perfect house? What would you have to have in your perfect house? Okay, teacher, my perfect house should have uh, five rooms. Mm -hmm. Very specific. A terrace. Uh, terrace, is it? Terrace. Uh -huh. Terrace. Uh, a kitchen, three bathrooms, a large room, uh -huh. an extensive, extensive garden, a garage. Mm -hmm. It must be very ecologist with sunlight and acoustic windows, maybe. Okay, that sounds very specific. Sounds like you have been thinking of that before. Great, very good. Yeah, so a large house with some specific things like five rooms, uh, three bathrooms, a kitchen. I also remember a big room, also um, the ecolo ecologist and with acoustic windows. Sounds it's my dreams uh, building this this house in Aguachapan, San Lorenzo, Aguachapan. Also, my that. the location yes. is always important because yeah, San Lorenzo is is San Lorenzo a fresh place, would you say? No, it's a hot place. It's hot. Yeah, because oh, okay. uh, antes is before, well, oh sí, before. Before a uh, many, many, many many trees but now is a hot it's a hot place yeah but it, it it looks like a quiet place like a very i mean like a very quiet calm place yes, como it's, lugar a, muy calmado. it's a very quiet no delinquency yeah the, it looks like that yeah Okay, nice. Very good. So, very specific. Thank you. That is also a very good example of how you can provide, you know, the description on uh, how you want your house to look like. Okay, now let's hear from who? Um, maybe Guadalupe. How would you describe your perfect house, Guadalupe? What things would you have to have in your perfect house? Hello, teacher. Hello there. A uh, country house with... Mm -hmm. Three bedrooms, a large kitchen, a dining room, a large living room, a three corridors. Corridor, ¿cómo se dice? Yes, corridors. Corridors, a, a garden with all kits of flowers. I would like to have chickens uh -huh. a, and three dogs. Three dogs, dogs. okay. Dogs. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds great. Um, very specific as well. And I see that probably I'm the only one who, who wants a small house because I, I mean, so far, I have the only one who have been the only one who has mentioned that. But um, I don't know why, maybe because I have been in big houses before and I have seen how the cleaning process turns more tedious, the bigger the house. Probably that's what got me into thinking that I don't want a house, you know, that is too big. But yeah, it sounds sounds very good. 
Sounds like a nice idea for, for a perfect house. Okay, now, uh, can we get uh, Susana to describe your perfect house? How would you like a house, Susana? If you were to, to build your own house to start it from scratch, how would you mm -hmm. like it to be? I would like um, a, a big house um, between mountains. Mm -hmm. um, I like, uh, uh, I would like, no, I like, live in downtown is es fuera de san salvador no eso sería out outside of san salvador outside mm -hmm. okay i i like um uh, yes uh, i like uh, to live outside, outside san salvador, from san salvador. Mm -hmm. yes uh, there are there are uh, advantages. How do you Ad say advantages? Advantages. Mm -hmm. um, disadvantages. But disadvantage. <laughs> yes, because uh, the way is very, very okay, long. Long. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Very long. Um, but um, I like to live um. Uh, listen uh, without without um, uh, ruido mm -hmm. without noises without noises yes oh. and uh, it's very comfortable and is um, is is relaxed too mm -hmm. yeah I can I can tell you know people who live in in in, in downtown areas most of the time think of that of living in places where there's not as many as many um people around in my case for example i don't live near much people um but i sometimes feel like i would like to li to live in a in a closer place to a city because i live close to my city but i would like to be closer to a bigger city so many times i have thought of like even moving to San Salvador, there was a time like three years ago when I was this close from moving to um, to San Salvador. At the end, I just felt like uh, it wasn't the time yet. And I decided to stay here, you know, in, in, in El Transito here in San Miguel. But um, also here, the city is not that big. But if you live in the downtown area, it gets crowded sometimes and it's very busy because there are many people announcing things. There are many people selling things. So there is a lot of noises, cars, buses, sorry, um, even music from the municipal radio. So there are so many things going on and that kind of disturbs you. Even when you're not working, if you're at home, it disturbs you and it doesn't let you, you know, just relax. Cause for example, if you live very close to the center of a city and uh, you want to have a Sunday off just to relax, it is difficult to do it because on Sunday is when people go out and when people have the chance to maybe do shopping and, thing and things like those. And that doesn't allow you to have that confidence or that uh, relaxation. So, yeah, I see your point and I see the point of many of you guys that living outside of the city is probably ideal for that, for having relaxation and calm. So yeah, in my case, I if I ever get stressed out, I just go to the backyard of my house and I can see some mountains from here. You know, I, I even at night, at night it's even better because I can see the mountains and I can see some lights on top of the mountains. Those lights are from the antennas, from cellular antennas, but I like to see how they blink sometimes. Um, and also those mountains are the ones that are just in between my house and El Espino Beach. So that's, I, I think I have told you guys before that I can go to the beach just in like 20, 25 minutes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's something that um, I feel that helps, you know, the, 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 the person's well-being. It helps a lot when you have that space of tranquility. But yeah, cool. Very nice. Thank you very much, Susana. Okay, now let's hear from uh, Glenda. What do you think, Glenda? What would you like to have in your perfect house? I, uh, hi, teacher. <laughs> I would Hello. like to live a farm. 
Mm. A pharmacy. To live with many, many dog, dogless. Mm -hmm. um, ¿Cómo se dice rodeado? Surrounded. Surrounded many, many trees. Tree, mm -hmm. Trees. Trees. Tree. Uh, rivers. Yeah. Okay, so that was my idea. You copy me from the river thing. Yeah, I, the thing is that when I was younger, when I was, I think, like four years old, I remember my mom used to take me to one river that is very close from, from here. It's in uh, a place that is called Hacienda Nueva. Um, so in that, uh, in that place, they have like five tiny rivers, you know, flowing by. Like the, 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 the thing, the town is surrounded by rivers. So there are rivers almost everywhere. And it just feels so great. Like there are some places where it's very dusty, it's mountainous, uh, but there are, there are other places where it's very plain and uh, you see how green the grass is. You see, you smell even the wetness of the, of the land and it's very enjoyable. Going to those places, I feel like it's, it's just enjoyable. And to be honest, there is one river that almost looks like an atalaya. I don't know if you guys have ever seen, you know, the, the, the front cover of an atalaya and you see how beautiful some of those landscapes are. So that's how I felt in, in one of those places. They look just, just great. So yeah, living close rivers is, I think it's, it's the way of living. Okay, good. Uh, now let's hear from a boy. It's gonna be the last person that I'm going to be asking. And I think this time, I am going to ask the opinion from uh, Edenilson. Tell me, Edenilson, if you were to have a perfect house, what would you like to have in that perfect house? Okay, teacher. I would like to uh, have a big house mm -hmm. with four floors and three bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And maybe some gadget, smart gadget. Mm. Okay. So yes. great. Sounds like a tech savvy house. And uh, it's also something very dreamable, you know, having some smart gadgets to which you can use only tell them. Um, I don't know if, for example, you prefer to use the Alexa system, you can only tell Alexa, do this, do that. And, uh, you know, having your house do that, I think it's, it's a very nice experience. In my case, the only thing that I have, uh, actually set up with Alexa is my, my rooms, um, uh, liked. That is the only thing that I have that is kind of a smart, but at the same time, I would like to, hmm? I have an Alexa, but I can, I then use for for only us for uh -huh. only for only as a speaker the same here same thing in my house <laughs> yeah the only thing we use alexa for is as a speaker because we have it actually set uh in the kitchen so when me my sister or any of of us here in the family are cooking um we simply use say alexa play this alexa play that and there she goes you know up to play but we don't really use it as we could, you know, as, as, a, as a smart device. The only thing that I have, as I said, is only a light bulb that I have in my room. And that's the only one that I can ask Alexa to turn the room's uh, light into green, for example, and she will do it. But there are many more options, many more things. And probably Gustavo will be able to tell us more about how uh, those systems, you know, can be set up. Um, yes, but yeah. I will have some articles I imagine, Smart. I imagine because he mentions that he likes robotics. So it will be something very, very hips, you know, knowing how to set up some systems like those. But having a smart house near a river, I think it will be the perfect way to go. But okay, so guys, thank you very much for your opinions. Thank you for uh, that information you have shared with us. Now we're going to jump into the topic that we are going to be covering this afternoon. I told you before, it's going to be, uh, as first, we have conditional sentences with if clauses. That is the first thing we're going to be covering. And when we use these conditional phrases, what we are doing is that um, we're basically going to be introducing a possibility. 
like something that will happen if and only if something else ends up happening. So that's the conditional sentence. That's when we're going to be using conditionals. Now, the most common conditional is going to be if. Ahora, si ustedes en algún momento se habían preguntado, espero que ya a este punto ya lo supiéramos, o, bueno, a veces pueda que no. Eh, en español, ¿verdad? Sabemos que existen dos tipos de sí. Uno que es con tilde, que es el sí asertivo, el sí que utilizamos para poder asegurar algo o eh, aceptar algo. Y el otro es el sí condicional, o sea, que es el que utilizamos en situaciones cuando, por ejemplo, eh, yo digo, si llueve, no voy a ir a la, a la clase. Um, si estoy enfermo, mejor ni salgo de la casa. Entonces, ese es el sí condicional. Ese no tiene acento, no tiene tilde. Y lo que sí pasa es que en español es difícil, ¿verdad? A veces hacer la diferencia entre los dos, ya que la letra I es una letra que suena casi todo el tiempo como si estuviese acentuada. Es una letra bastante, um, eh, ¿cómo se llama? Bastante rítmica y tiene bastante sonido. Entonces, por lo tanto, es difícil a veces que estemos seguros en qué momento se usa cuál. Lo único que nos ayuda a identificar cuál de los dos sí estamos usando es básicamente el contexto, ¿verdad? Dependiendo de qué estemos hablando. Si, por ejemplo, alguien me dice, ¿quieres agua? Yo le digo, sí. Significa entonces que es el sí asertivo, el sí que acepta la oferta. Pero eh, la persona, por ejemplo, si me dice, si quieres agua, me dejas saber, en ese caso es diferente, ¿verdad? Es la condición, ¿sí? Es cuando estamos introduciendo una condición. Entonces, en inglés no tenemos esa complicación que vayan a ser parecidas las formas de, de ambos, porque pues el yes es el que utilizamos para hacer, um, básicamente, para proveer información asertiva, y el if es el que vamos a utilizar cuando estemos hablando acerca de condicionales. ¿sí? Entonces, if significa básicamente sí, pero condicional eh, en español. Now, uh, we have two different ways of using it. We can place it at the beginning of a sentence, as we see in all these examples, and we can also place it um, in the middle of a sentence. Okay, now, when we place it at the beginning of a sentence, we have here... Uh, that it's the possible situation. Normally, the possible situation comes in present, uh, in simple present, okay? So possible situation, this is the condition. This is the thing that may happen. It has not happened, but it may happen. And then we have the consequence, okay? The consequence, it go, it's going to be in the future. We normally use will. However, you can also use may and might. Okay, you can also use may and might. But yeah, the consequence then is what would happen if the other thing ends up happening. Entonces, la consecuencia sería, ¿verdad? Lo que pasaría si lo que anteriormente mencioné pase en realidad. So, as I said, if it rains, I'm not going to class. O sea, no estamos seguros si va a llover. Pero si llueve, por si eso pasa, entonces yo doy la consecuencia. ¿sí? Si llueve... Yo no iré a clase. So if it rains, I'm not going to class. Then the next one. Uh, so we have here the examples. Oh, perdón, la otra, la otra forma mejor. Antes que nada, voy a mencionar cómo sería la otra forma. La otra forma es básicamente darle vuelta, ¿sí? A la, a la posición en la cual colocamos las diferentes clases de la oración. Por ejemplo, debería ser, siguiendo el mismo ejemplo que les estoy presentando, ¿verdad? De no ir a clase, sería, I'm not going to class. See, I'm not going to class if it rains. Okay, if it rains. So that's it. I'm not going to class if it rains. Now, the other one is, if it rains, I'm not going to class. I'm not going to class. So you see, it's a bit different. There is a small difference mostly in the way you place the sentence. But in the end, it's not really that complicated. All right. The only thing you have to remember is that when you have the if class at the beginning of the sentence, you're going to have to add a comma. That comma is going to, just, is going to establish the division between the conditional class and the consequence. Okay. So you're going, you have to establish that Uh, that division, that pause between the conditional class and the consequence that will take place if the other event 
ends up happening. So we have here, if you get paid, uh, sorry, if you get a high paying job, you won't have to work as hard. Okay, so if you get a high paying job, you won't have to work as hard. The, the next example, if you don't have to work as hard, you'll have a lot of more free time. If you don't have to work as hard, you'll have a lot of more free time. Then we have, if you have a lot more free time, you might get bored. If you have a lot more free time, you might get bored. If you get bored, you may have to look for another job. If you get bored, you may have to look for another job. Muy bien. Esta básicamente el ejemplo que se presenta aquí es una cadena de consecuencias. Sí, o sea, lo que vamos haciendo es casi que siguiendo el mismo ritmo, ¿verdad? Eh, de la consecuencia, luego la tomamos la consecuencia como otra posible condición, algo que podría eh, en el futuro cambiar la percepción que tenemos de, lo, de la consecuencia misma y así, ¿verdad? Se le daba dando un poco eh, la línea o como la historia siempre con condicionales. Pero ustedes pueden ir pensando en este momento en otros ejemplos porque vamos a presentar ejemplos en un ratito acerca de qué cosas podrían suceder, qué cosas podríamos nosotros mencionar como condicionales. Usualmente, por ejemplo, las cosas que se presentan como condicionales llegan a ser o sueños que tenemos, como en el caso de la pregunta que les estaba haciendo, like, what is the prescription of your perfect house? So you can say, if I win the lottery, I would like to build my perfect house. Sí, entonces es básicamente eh, cómo se va dando, ¿verdad? La línea de consecuencias y además cómo también utilizamos eh, los condicionales. Entonces, el condicional, una vez más, simplemente para repetir y recalcar cómo va, siempre lo vamos a utilizar eh, cuando está al principio de la, de la oración con una coma. Cuando está en el medio, no necesariamente con una coma. Y luego eh, que la otra parte de la oración va a tener que ser eh, en una forma del futuro. ¿sí? En cualquier forma del futuro. O sea, puede ser, por ejemplo, if you get a high paying job, I'm not working anymore por decir algo, o I'm not working as hard. Entonces, eso, a pesar que es con ING, siempre es ING orientado hacia el futuro. Entonces, significa, ¿verdad?, que lo estamos utilizando siempre como una condicional. Por otro lado, esos, esos ejemplos que tenemos acá, todos son eh, futuros rectos y correctos. El primero, por ejemplo, a pesar que es negativo, siempre representa futuro. El segundo sería un futuro contractado, si you have a lot more free time. Eh, might es otro de esos, de esos verbos que utilizamos o podemos utilizar para hablar acerca del futuro. Aunque might, si bien recuerdan, o espero que lo recordemos, eh, es uno de esos verbos que podemos utilizar como verbos modales, ¿verdad? Y el verbo modal, o sea, lo que se refiere es a situaciones que en este caso específico, utilizando might, no están bajo nuestro control. Si yo digo, por ejemplo, if you have a lot more free time, you might get bored. Esa es una posibilidad, sí, pero es una posibilidad, digamos, difícil de predecir. O sea, simplemente algo que sí está por ahí, ¿verdad? Está en, dentro de las posibilidades, pero no es algo tan posible, no es extremadamente posible. Ahora, por ejemplo, otra cosa en donde podríamos utilizar might en este momento, si usted ve que están asomando un montón de nubes, ¿verdad? En el horizonte y dice, it might rain. Sí, es una posibilidad, pero es una posibilidad bien pequeña. O sea, no es algo que ni esté bajo su control ni tampoco que sea el tiempo, ¿verdad? Para que esté lloviendo. Y en general, might lo vamos a utilizar de esa forma. Cuando vamos a hablar acerca de cosas que no están necesariamente bajo nuestro control, que no son cosas que nosotros mismos vamos a poder eh, decidir cómo van a funcionar. Luego tenemos uh, may. La utilización de may es otra bastante posible, ¿verdad? A la hora de utilizar los condicionales. O más bien dicho, a la hora de hablar acerca del futuro. Porque en este caso lo, lo estamos usando más que todo porque es en sí acerca del futuro. So if you say may with anything, uh, that would mean that you are talking about how something is possible to happen, but it's not like the, the most plausible thing um, to happen. So yeah, you may have to look for another job. Like if that happens, you know, it's a possibility. 
Así que para eso entonces utilizamos los condicionales. Ahora, eh, ¿qué ejemplo podemos pensar nosotros? ¿Qué ejemplo se nos puede ocurrir a la hora de hablar acerca de condiciones? O sea, digamos, si yo digo, um, no sé, si hay algún fan aquí, digamos, de, del Barça, ¿verdad? Que va a jugar en un rato. Entonces, y, y dicen, si gana el Barça, voy a ir a comer a tal parte. O, what would be a condition that you guys can think of? A ver, un ejemplo de una condicional. If, 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 if. Let's see. I think we're going to get one from uh, Carlos. Can you think of an example, Carlos, of a sentence using a conditional? Si pasa esto, yo haría lo otro. Sample. Mm -hmm. Okay. If, if you get a, a high paying job, mm -hmm. what will happen? ¿Qué, qué pasaría si, si, si obtengo un trabajo bien pagado? Um, you uh, buy mm -hmm. and you could buy new car. You could buy a new car. Very good. So if you get a high paying job, you could buy a new car. Voy a hacer más grande esta letra porque ahí donde está bien chiquito no se ve. So there we go. If you get a high paying job, you could buy a new car. Aquí coloco eso de could porque también, ¿verdad? Could es otra de las opciones que podríamos utilizar para hablar acerca de futuro. En este caso es más de posibilidad que de futuro, pero va en la misma línea. O sea, nos ayuda a que la condicional funcione completamente. Muy bien. Ahora veamos si um, maybe Rita, can you think of an example, Rita? Okay, that is a very good example, Susana. Mm -hmm. I close a uh, important business. Uh, I can invite my wo workers. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> okay. Todos a, 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 a esperar que le vaya bien a Rita, entonces. <laughs> I can invite my co-workers. Solo un detalle que la palabra después de, de if, if no la alcancé a entender bien. No sé qué fue lo que dijo. Yo le puse close porque fue lo que alcancé a entender, pero no sé si eso if es. I, uh -huh. If I, ajá. Close. Close, close oh, okay. is correct. Ajá. Uh -huh. Yes. O sea, como hablando verdad de un negocio que está como en camino, si lo logro uh -huh. concretar o cerrar. Sí. Yes. 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 So then, yes, you can use it. So if I close Uh, uy. So if I close an important business, I can invite my coworkers. Ahora, aquí vamos a ponerle para que sea más, más específico, my coworkers to dinner, digamos. Sí, o sea, nos va a llevar, nos va a, llevar a comer okay. ahí bien, bien cabal. Pupusa dice, pero comida es comida. Y como dice mi papá, caballo regalado, no se le busca lado. Uh -huh. Ok, good. Great, very good. If I close an important business, I can invite my coworkers to dinner. Para que vean que Rita piensa en ustedes. Miren, no solo pienso en ella. Now, if you get up early, you may find less traffic in the city. Very good. That is a very good example. Muy bien. Así como lo están mandando por el chat, también es una muy buena idea. Now, if you get up early, you may find... Y me gusta también la utilización del may porque, pues, una vez más, ¿verdad? Eh, incluso, si utilizáramos Mike fuera más todavía potente la oración. Pero con may... Eh, la posibilidad está, sí existe la posibilidad, pero tampoco es como una posibilidad tan latente. Entonces, eh, la utilización de, del verbo may es muy apropiada para explicar algo como esto. So, if you get up early, you may find less traffic in the city. Podrías encontrar menos, eh, menos tráfico en la ciudad. Now, let's see if we can get another example. This one may be coming from... Um, who from Glinda? How about you, Glinda? Can you think of an example using a conditional? I, if I learn English, mm -hmm. I will no longer use the 
translator. Okay, I will no longer. <laughs> I will no longer need the translator. Siempre se usa, la verdad. Porque hay palabras que se le van a uno. Pero igual, ya es, no, no es tan necesario. But good, very good. It's a good idea. If I learn English, I will no longer need the translator. I will no longer use the translator. Bueno, en este caso, de hecho, está correcto la utilización de need. Porque cuando hablamos de una need, es casi como algo que, o sea, de verdad, verdad yo necesito tenerlo. En cambio, si dijésemos, o sea, y cuando no sabemos el, el, el idioma, pues es necesario. Ya cuando lo sepamos, lo puedo usar, sí, pero no estoy diciendo que es necesario. Así que, muy bien, porque si dijese, por ejemplo, I will no longer use the translator, entonces significa que, o sea, que lo va a desechar al 100%, ¿verdad? que ya nunca más, que su idea es nunca volver ni siquiera a recordar cómo se escribía translator para volver a usarlo. Ok, good. Uh, let's see, the next example may be coming from... Um... El Nilsson, no sé si el Nilsson está activo el micrófono o si no, pues puede ser también a través del chat. As you feel better, el Nilsson. While we wait for you, we can also probably get an example from Lorena. What do you think, Lorena? Do we have an example we can think of for conditionals? Hello. Hello there. Um, vamos a ver un ejemplo. Mm -hmm. If my favorite Team wins. Mm -hmm. I'll invite, invite, no sé cómo sería invite. Invite. Invite uh -huh. you all to dinner. Okay. Invite you to dinner. Very uh, good. That sounds great. If my favorite, eso suena como una propuesta. Además, hasta cierto punto, alguien la puede interpretar como una apuesta, no necesariamente pero esta propuesta, ¿sí? esta condición se puede convertir después en una bet, ¿sí? o sea que es una, una apuesta ya uh, ok, Yanira no quiso que la llamaran esta vez, miren, de una vez lo mandó if I do my job well I will have a better salary that is the ideal it will be perfect, or I mean I don't know how things work for you guys but yeah, it will um, it will be perfect It would be perfect if, if it worked like that, you know. So if my favorite team wins, I will invite you to dinner. That is a good uh, a good option. Also, if I do my job well, I will have a better salary. En este caso, se reemplaza el will for will porque estamos hablando, verdad, de condiciones, ¿sí? Porque el will no funciona necesariamente como una condición aquí específicamente. Porque se entiende would como algo factible, ¿sí? O sea, como algo que sí puede pasar, pues, como algo más posible. El decir que si hago mi trabajo bien, obtendría un mejor salario, ¿sí? Suena mucho más posible. Entonces, deja de ser un condicional y pasa a ser, si vamos a hablar así eh, concreto y directo, pasa a ser más como una request, como una petición que se hace, no es una petición necesariamente pero funciona como tal entonces porque no es verdad una condición fuerte, en cambio el decir I will, sí es una condición, es simplemente estoy hablando imaginariamente, verdad, si hago esto, pasará lo otro pero no hay una gran o sea una enorme certeza de aquello que esa es otra cosa las condicionales normalmente se usan para hablar acerca de ese tipo de posibilidades verdad posibilidades eh, no tan certeras. Ya cuando algo es más certero, en ese caso no necesariamente va a ser ya un condicional, sino que se va a conocer como pues una posibilidad, ¿sí? No, una, no va a necesitar condición, sino que it, it will be more of a possibility. Ok, now we're going to get uh, one last example. Eh, estamos esperando todavía el de Leninson. Uh, but we're going to get one more and that one is going gonna, it's gonna to come from uh, Gustavo. Can we get an example from you, Gustavo, please? Hi, teacher. Hello there. Uh, if I go Mm. 
I go. I go to Mexico. Mm -hmm. I go to Mexico. I call. Mm -hmm. I will go. Home. I will go. Sorry, uh huh. Um, it's Mexican uh, street food. I will go eat a street, eat, eat Mexican. Is, uh -huh. Okay, go, I will go eat, eat Mexican, street, Mexican food. street food. Okay. Yes. Muy bien. It took us a while, but we got there. So if I go to Mexico, I will go eat Mexican street food. Sounds like a uh, a proper plan, a proper idea, Um, you know, for a conditional. So if I go to Mexico, I will go eat Mexican street food. Tacos, tortas, and all the same. Okay, now, uh, then we have, if I travel by motorcycle, we have to add the comma, I will arrive early for work. That sounds great, Elinson. Very good. If I travel by motorcycle, I will arrive early, early to for work. See, great. Very good. So we have these examples all set up. Now, what happens? As I told you before, if I do this, oh, wait. Ah. Uh, Okay, so here, we do this, we take that out, and then we place it here at the beginning. You could buy a new car if you get a high paying job. Does that work? Does that seem to be a conditional? Yes, it doesn't look like the regular thing, but it is also a conditional. The only difference here, and the only difference is going to be that if, or the if class is going to be right in the middle. You could uh, buy a new car if you get a high paying job. Entonces, esto también, ¿verdad? Es otro condicional. Por ejemplo, este, esta, esta fue una que, que sí me gustó bastante como para poderlo usar, ¿verdad? En este, en, este otro, en este otro modo. So we take this out of here and then uh, we just place it at the beginning of the sentence and we have a new conditional sentence. So it is, I will no longer need the translator if I learn English. Now, here, aquí sí podríamos utilizar un adjetivo, porque también se podría utilizar un adjetivo para darle como un mayor énfasis. O sea, suena bien, porque suena bien. Yo digo, I will no longer need the translator if I learn English. Sí, pero también podríamos utilizar el adjetivo proper, if I learn proper English. Sí, o sea, el inglés apropiado, digamos. Uy, if I learn proper, proper English, there we go. So I will no longer need the translator if I learn proper English. Muy bien. Bueno, entonces, esta es eh, la sección de los condicionales. Ahora, pues, espero, ¿verdad?, que ya tengamos una mejor idea de cuándo los vamos a usar, cómo los vamos a usar, y también que los empecemos a usar. Cuando sea posible, siempre que haya una oportunidad en la que hablemos acerca de, qué sé yo, una posibilidad que no sea inmediata, eh, podríamos, ¿verdad?, tratar de incluir allí un condicional. Ahora, esta conversación es de la que les estaba hablando, es la conversación que vamos a estar practicando eh, en un momento, í ¿sí? Y la conversación se titula I need a job. I need a job. Okay, so the conversation is between two people. In this occasion, we have Brad and Dan. Those are the two people taking part of it. Uh, the way it's going to go, let me make it a little bit bigger. Ah, no, ya no cabe. Okay, so the way it's gonna go is as following. So we have, I'm so broke, I really need to find a job. So do I. Do you see anything good listed on the, it will be listed, sorry. Listed on the internet. How about this? A door-to-door -door salesperson to sell baby products, like diapers and things? No, thanks. And anyway, I'm not good at selling. Well, I am. I might check that one out. Oh, here's one for you. An assistant entertainment di director on a cruise ship. That sounds like fun. I like traveling and I've never been on a cruise ship. I say here you have to work 
every day. It, so it says here, you have to work every day while the ship is at sea. That's okay. I don't mind working long hours if the pay is good. What's the phone number? It's 555-3455. Okay, so I'll read it once again because I made a few mistakes. So let's see it one more time. I'm so broke. I really need to find a job. So do I. Do you see anything good listed on the internet? How about this? A door-to-door -door salesperson to sell baby products. Like diapers and things? No thanks. And anyway, I'm not good at selling. Well, I am. I might check that one out. Oh, here's one for you. An assistant entertainment director on a cruise ship. That sounds like fun. I like traveling and I've never been on a cruise ship. He says here you have to work every day while the ship is at sea. That's okay. I don't mind working long hours if the pay is good. What's the number? Or what's the phone number? It's 555-3455. Okay, so that's the conversation. This is the one. Uh, now, can I please get two participants to read it, please, for the rest of you guys? I need two volunteers to help me out with the reading. Okay, so we have uh, Carlos and uh, Jorge. Then we're going to have Josue and Janira. Sí, vamos a hacer dos prácticas esta vez. Carlos and Jorge and Josue and Janira. So, Carlos and Jorge, you may start whenever you feel ready. Okay, okay Carlos. I am, I am done. done. Okay. I am so broke. I really need to clean my job. So do I. Do you see anything good listen on the internet? How about this? A door to door sales person to sell baby products? Like dippers and things, not dance. And anyways, I'm not good at selling. Well, I am admit na admit admit chat the one out. Oh, here's one for you, an assistant entertainment director on a cruise ship. That sounds like fun. I like traveling, and I've never been on cruise ship. It's say like here, you have to work every day while the ship is a seat. That's okay. I don't like working long hours if the pay is good. What's the phone number? It's 555-3455. Okay, good. Very good, Carlos and Jorge. Now, can we get um, Josue and Janita, please? I'm, I'm sure, Brock, I really need to find a job. So do I. Do you see anything good listen listen in the internet? Listen, listen. How about about this? A door a door salesperson to sell baby products? Like diapers and things? No, thanks. And anyway, I'm not good at selling. Well, I have a meet checked that one out. Oh, here's one for you, an assistant and the training director <clears throat> on a cruise ship. That sounds like fun. I like traveling and I've never been on a cruise ship. It says uh, you have to work every while the ship is uh, a ship. That's okay. I don't mind working long. Hours, if the pay is good. What's the phone number? It's 555-3455. Ok, very yes. good. Good, good, good. Muy bien. Entonces, ahora que ya tuvimos la práctica acá en general, vamos a pasar a dividirnos un momento. Sí, vamos a ir a los breakout rooms y vamos a practicar con los demás compañeros. Ahora, um, we're going to do it in groups of uh, large groups. We're only going to make two groups. So we're going to be 
you know, practicing with, with uh, more of our classmates. So here we go. Uh, you guys, please take the screenshot of the conversation and we're going to be back here in just a while. Fine, thanks. Um, Did you get the pics? Sorry? Do you get the pics there? Uh, and the, a picture. Uh, yes, I'm sharing. Please share. Yes, yes. Give me a minute. Uh, okay. so now I'm clear. Can you see it? Okay. Do you see it? Yes, thanks. Okay. okay. Ivania, Samuel, Josue, and Gustavo. Okay. If you are agree, um, I'm beginning and, and you? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm done. Okay. Okay. Start. I'm so broke. I really need to find a job. So do I. Do you see anything good listed on the internet? Uh, how about this? A door to door salesperson to sell baby products? Like uh, diapers and things? No thanks. And anyway, I'm not good at, at selling. Well, I am. I might check that one out. Oh, here's one for you. An assistant entertainment director on a cruise ship. That sounds like fun. I like traveling and I've never been on the cruise ship. It says here you have to work every day while the ship is at sea. That's okay. I don't mind working hours if the pay is good. What's the phone number? It's 555-3455. Five, 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 five. Okay. Okay. The other can continue. Yo, uh, yo, Alan, ¿quién, ¿quién va a ser el otro? John Brandt. Va. Iván es tu pareja, dice. Ah, yo voy a ser su pareja. Ah, bueno. I am so broke and really new to find a home. So do I. Do you see anything good listen on the internet? Who about do this? A door to door silent person to set baby production. Like diapers and things? No, thanks. And anyway, I'm not good at selling. At selling. I will. I act and me check the one out on or there one for you. Um, Asking and entertainment direct of the Process chief. That sounds like fun. I like traveling and I've never been on a cruise ship. It says that you have to work every day with the chick. Is the same? 
That's okay. I don't mind working long hours if the pay is good. What's the phone number? It's uh, fine, fine, fine. Three, four, five, five. Okay, thank you. Josué, vamos nosotros dos. Ok, no hay problema. Vale, yo, Dan, I so broke, I really need to find a job. So, so do I, do you see anything or listen on the internet? How oh, about this? A door-to-door -door sales person to sell baby products. Uh -huh. Like dippers and things, not things, and anyway, I'm not good at, at selling. Well, I am, I might check that one out. Oh, here's one for you an assistant, entertainer, director on a cruise ship. That sounds like fun. I like traveling and, and I never been on a cruise. It say here you have to work every day. Well, the ship is a team. That's okay. I don't mean working long hours in their base. It's a goal. What's, what's the phone number? It's five 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 three four five five. Gustavo, está ahí. Hello. ¿Qué hacemos? Lémosle pues. ¿Quién quiere hacer usted? Cualquiera. Te dígame. Dale pues. Comience o comienza. Comienza ya, vaya. Vale. Bye. I'm so broke. I really need to find a job. So do I. Do you see anything good listing on the internet? How, how about this? A door-to-door sales person to sell baby products. Like diaper and things, no thanks. And anyway, I am not good at selling. Well, I am. I might check that one. Check that one out. Oh, here's one for you. An assistant entertainment director on a cruise ship. That sounds like fun. I like traveling and even never been on a cruise ship. It says here you have to work every day while the ship is at sea. That's okay. I don't mind working long or if the pay is good, what's the phone number? It's five 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 three four five five. Excellent. Y ahora? Ya va a ser hora. Okay, so I saw that uh, there was one group who, who, who ended up to practice relatively quickly, and that's great. Now, uh, there was another one who took a while, who had more people participating, and it is also, you know, something good. Um, I like seeing that all of you guys were practicing, and that is basically the idea behind it, you know, for, to have you interact with one another, use your language, and uh, improve it's, if it's possible. So 
well, basically that is it for tomorrow. I think we are going to be having a class. We, I haven't really gotten the confirmation yet, but probably this afternoon or tomorrow morning, we're going to have, you know, the message um, confirming that we have a class tomorrow. It is very possible that I'm assuming that we are going to be having a class tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys um, have an amazing rest of your day. I also hope that if we are having a class tomorrow, I'm going to be seeing you guys here. So all I have to do now is thank you for your attention and participation in this class. And uh, yeah, have a good one and see you tomorrow if we are to meet. So bye-bye for now. See you. See ya.